Hey everybody, welcome to Trading Capital's exclusive analysis. In today's video, we're going to be discussing natural gas, which is on my screen over here, the US dollar, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, and what we need to be aware of moving forward as we start this quarter two. So, essentially taking a look at the natural gas daily chart over here, we've been touching base on this wedge pattern that natural gas has been chopping in for quite a long time. It always amazes me from a technical standpoint that the market makers and price action can really chop in such a wide or such a narrowing range for such a long duration of time. I mean, this is about a four week grind lower inside of a narrowing range. Now, as we approach the apex here, this leads me to think that it's more bullish and likely to break up. That's typically what this chart pattern shows. More times than not, falling wedge patterns, down sloping wedge patterns break to the upside. And that's what we are basing this on. We're also basing this on the fact that we have a beautiful monthly reversal signal that we got basically over here at the at near the end of February, which followed through to the beginning of March. And now we've done a near picture perfect 100% retrace of this initial up move. So this is the thing about a lot of people trying to chase the trend and pile in on the long side. If you were trying to chase the trend here, you have been obliterated especially when you went with double or triple levered ETFs. So we are positioned well. Our TC members have been slowly accumulating at the key technical levels and we are primed and ready uh, and, and honestly expecting a breakout to the upside. Now, a couple key important things that we have to keep in mind. We do have natural gas storage tomorrow, which they're forecasting around a 21 billion drawdown. So that's fairly light, but it is coming at the tail end of the heating season, the majority of the heating season, which is why it's a little bit light. But it leads me to think that considering this pattern is more likely or bullish than bearish, it leads me to think that the market has those forecasts wrong and maybe the drawdown comes in a little bit bigger than expected. So based off of this bullish pattern, if we do get a confirmed close above this two, you know, 221, 225 level, then it likely will send natural gas. We should have a sharp move up to 247 and then eventually up to this previous gap fill high around $3. I'm still bullishly optimistic. The only thing that is concerning me, which I have had feedback from a couple members, is if the stock market crashes or if the stock market goes through a significant decline, couldn't that also be a headwind for natural gas and couldn't we see natural gas fall sharply lower? That is absolutely a possibility. When there's a liquidity strain and a liquidity crisis in the markets, Typically, all assets get thrown out with the baby out with the bathwater. Now, the one optimistic thing that I have that we have going for natural gas, one could argue that the price has already crashed from the highs. If you take a look at all of the commodity, there's not one single commodity that is down as much as natural gas from the highs. Natural gas from the highs is down over 76%, and you really can't say that about any other commodity. So one could argue that natural gas has already crashed from the highs and it's now putting in a little bit of a basing formation. Whereas you look at other commodities like gold and silver, those ones are trying to break out. Oil's in kind of no man's land, just trying to hover off of that OPEC cut. So realistically, the only basing formation that I'm seeing in commodities is this potential natural gas chart. Now, could it fall lower? It absolutely could. Basically, we have been getting a lot of leading economic data that has been deteriorating and showing the economy is deteriorating at a faster rate. But it doesn't mean this asset can't catch a bid because if liquidity does flow out of the overbought commodities and into the oversold commodities, that's when you could see a big, big rally in this oversold commodity. And let's be, let's be real with ourselves. Natural gas is not going anywhere. There's always going to have a use. And even if you just look at the larger term monthly time frame, this is where you broke out your impulse green wide range bar. You had a retest candle over there on a monthly bottoming tail. You have tons and tons of support trend lines going back quite a long time in history, all the way to 2008, a 2014 pivot. You have this downsloping trend line. So there's a massive amount of support in this range. And when you look at it, natural gas traded in 2016. It did pierce this level and made it all the way to 167, but it rebounded within short time. Over here in 2012, natural gas pierced this $2 level, but rebounded with great power. And then over here in 2000, 2001, the dot-com crash, arguably the worst drawdowns for the indices. What did natural gas do? It pierced this level we're trading at and it had a magnificent rally to the upside. So 
this basically this 210 this 220 confluence of area is a huge huge level for natural gas that it has traded throughout its whole price action yes it could pierce it yes dynamics could always deteriorate and change which causes liquidity and fear in the market but you have to take your shots at some levels being a technical trader and even if you're a long-term investor i mean at some point in time this natural gas price is likely going to double and even triple from this time but it's just a matter of can you weather the storm and use position management correctly if this were to collapse another 20 percent if this were to go down to a dollar fifty i'm not saying that's my base case but you always have to be aware of the downside risk now back to the positives this pattern does favor and is more likely to get a continuation move to the upside all right let's touch base on the dollar now because the dollar is certainly putting in some interesting price action if you flip to the dxy chart take a look at this pattern where did we see this falling wedge pattern before you saw it over here and you got a breakout dollar ended up rallying off of the lows from that wedge pattern basically to a high of about five percent now you've done a full picture perfect retrace and you're creating this falling wedge pattern again just like we broke out over here I think we're on the near precipice of breaking out again on the dollar and notice how it's very similar natural gas has been trading in lockstep with the dollar very similar pattern here down sloping wedge pattern I mean the reason why these patterns keep showing up over and over and over again is because the markets always have two of the same elements fear and greed buyers and sellers so as long as there's going to be buyers and sellers in this market the same technical patterns show up in the charts over and over again and if the DXY does break out of this pattern it likely has a strong move up to the 106 area to test this resistance so that's kind of what my expectations are and I'm waiting full disclosure we are along the dollar so I am expecting a a technical breakout we are actually along the UUP just around these levels over here so I am expecting this pattern to continue to move to the upside in the event that this pattern fails you have a beautiful double bottom support level right at about a hundred dollars so even if this pattern does fail and you get a, a, a dip lower this double bottom on the dollar around 185 should be a very very technically sound level and the interesting thing today is we got two important economic data points which all suggest mass deterioration in the dollar and take a look at the dollar did the dollar dipped the dollar fell and it, many people were shaken out it was shaken out with a gap down this morning a little bit of a rally then another dip and then we got some harsh economic data around the 9 a.m. time frame or the 8:30 time frame which sent the dollar a little bit lower continued to rally and then that ISM data at around 11 a.m. here sent the dollar collapsing and made a new low and look what happened a beautiful reversal so when you have data points showing the dollar has every reason to weaken and fall lower based off of yields falling and the reason that um, the dollar usually falls is because yields falling but when you have yields falling and you're still seeing a bit in the dollar that is showing that okay it's also likely getting a little bit of a bounce from a fear trade perhaps we'll go back to here about something in Europe or Asia another banking crisis another systemic risk there's certainly a lot of aspects of Europe that are uh, on the precipice of I think seeing uh, another systemic risk or another systemic crisis and maybe we're seeing little near-term glimpses of the dollar starting to catch a bit from outside money flowing into the dollar and expecting some sort of a a catastrophe happening in the banking system in Europe or yet again another bank failure there's a lot of potential reasons maybe there's another uh, potential conflict brewing abroad and you're starting to see money flowing into the dollar or perhaps it's just a lot of the fear safety assets that have rallied like gold and silver are overbought extended into resistance and now seeing money flow back into the dollar there's a lot of different speculations and things we can make obviously we don't know the actual rumor or fact until it is announced on the media but one thing is for sure when you look at the technical picture the dollar is into support the dollars forming this falling wedge pattern which it broke out of and you are seeing accumulation happen intraday so definitely be paying attention to the, to the dollar because if the dollar gets going what is it likely going to do to the S&P 500 it likely is going to cause it to fall lower now the S&P 500 is really interesting because if you take a look at the S&P 500 I've informed my members that there's potential inverse head and shoulders forming again I don't like this right shoulder because it is extremely extremely sloppy 
very, very sloppy, not much consolidation, but nonetheless, let's assume this inverse head and shoulders does play out. It takes us all the way up to 427, 428, give or take, right in line with this previous pivot high, right in line with this impulse wide range breakdown zone. So there is a potential that this could play out, but notice how one thing that I've kept my eye on, just like the dollar had a down sloping wedge pattern, look at this up sloping wedge pattern. Look what happened. So notice how this up sloping wedge pattern connects your COVID low, connects your major pivot low over here, um, also connects your major pivot highs over here. You have basically been trading in this up sloping wedge pattern. Up sloping wedge patterns are notorious for breaking lower and look what happened. You broke this range, retrace got rejected, had a bigger fall. Up sloping wedge patterns are more likely to break to the downside. Now what could be happening is you're just getting another potential retrace back to this upsloping wedge pattern. And it just it's interesting to see that you're seeing a bearish pattern on the S&P 500 and a potential bullish pattern on the Dixie, the DXY. So noticing these little nuances and correlations has definitely been key to our profits here at Trading Capital. And we have definitely been outperforming the market this year to date. Um, basically in quarter one, we were well over 20, up over 22% on the session. We're actually up over that uh, since we've seen some uh, potential trades, short trades play out to the downside and uh, we're still holding those. But needless to say, if this pattern becomes a failed inverse head and shoulders, you could see much more downside. Now, the big level on the S&P, do we get a retrace to this neckline? And what type of a bounce do we get off of that neckline? So if you get a daily close below that neckline, this pattern is negated and it likely means we see a much more downside very quickly. If you get a daily close and hold above this key support and you bounce off of it, the markets have a chance to continue to grind higher and move up. Now there's a lot of economic data that we're heading into tomorrow and Friday. Friday the markets are closed. The volume has been lightening up. So it's interesting to see that the markets have been selling off on this light volume. That is a little bit of an indication that potentially we do have the ability to continue to grind and float higher. The only one negative is that you have this down sloping trend line connecting your major pivot high, major pivot here. You've closed now two daily candles below that neck, below this key trend line. However, today's price action pierced that level and managed to rally back inside the low pivot of yesterday. That is a short term bullish sign for the S&P being the fact that you did not get a daily confirmation below this key trend line. So that leaves me slightly leaning to maybe a little bit more upside barring any political news and obviously data dependent. The data tomorrow, the initial job loss claims as well as the natural gas storage can be market moving. And then on Friday, you have a massive, massive Friday economic data day. Basically, you have the unemployment on Friday at 830 and then you also have the initial job loss claims. So those two economic employment data set series are going to be market moving. And the interesting thing is the markets are closed on Friday. So definitely be paying attention to that. Now, a little bit of relative strength has been observed in the S&P 500. If you take a look at the NASDAQ, relative weakness. Look at this pattern on the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is creating this upsloping wedge pattern. Look what the S&P 500 did. You created this upsloping wedge pattern basically over here getting rejected and it fell sharply lower. So are we now in the precipice of seeing the QQQ play out this upsloping wedge pattern and fall? You will likely have tradable bounces but just observe that the S&P 500 is showing relative weakness this year and it already had a wedge, an upsloping wedge pattern break to the downside. If the Qs break this upsloping wedge pattern, it is going to weigh on the whole market to a great degree. Now, until you break this wedge pattern, you can keep chopping inside of this range from the low to the high to the low to the high. Eventually, you will have a break. But I'm just saying, be very cautious and aware that the S&P already broke out of this upsloping wedge pattern and the QQQ has not broken out of that upsloping wedge pattern but could be near term seeing some more downside. Uh, basically what I also want to touch base on if you throw on the 7 daily moving average for the QQQ, notice we closed below it today. If you throw on the 7 daily moving average for the SPY, 
you closed above it. So could we be seeing a rotation of capital out of the big cap tech, mega cap tech semiconductors? I think that is very, very likely. And just to touch base on something else on natural gas, there's one other point where I want to show you on natural gas. So the intraday chart on natural gas, notice how we haven't ever closed back above this uh, seven daily moving average since we really started the hard decline from the high pivot over here. Today we got our first daily close above the seven day moving average. And then to make things a little bit more intriguing and interesting from an intraday standpoint, if you throw in the 200 daily moving average, this is the intraday moving average, we have consolidated now above that moving average for nine consecutive hours. We have not been able to do that since we started the major decline from the high. We have been rejected over here, we've been rejected over here, we've been rejected over here. So the fact that we are putting in a bullish pattern and consolidating for the first time since the major decline above the key 200 intraday moving average leads me to think natural gas has the more likelier shot of getting a pop-up tomorrow or throughout the remainder of the coming weeks. I do think we're going to see more upside. And then you look at some of the actual natural gas stocks, which full disclosure, we are long AR nicely in the money now. AR has had a beautiful move off the lows and you just keep seeing these wicks being bought up. It dips, it gets bought up, it dips, it gets bought up. AR is on the very near precipice of breaking out of this downsloping pattern. And I do think that AR being a, a resource stock directly tied to natural gas is a little bit of a leading indicator, specifically since most of the natural gas resource stocks have been rallying as of late, despite natural gas not really getting going yet. So I do think it's a positive that the natural gas resource stocks that are also leading the overall natural gas price. That's typically what you want to see if you're long the underlying commodity. On that note, thank you all for tuning in. Please give this video a big like down below. If you're curious about some of our trades and, and how we position ourselves, definitely check out our website at tradingcapital.ca. On that note, I thank you all for tuning in. Please hit that big subscribe button if you found this vid video educational. And at the end of the day, this is all we try to do is put out education through our experience, through our interpretations. None of this is financial advice, but we try to make you see a, a point of view that perhaps you may not be looking at in the markets. On that note, take care everybody and we'll see you on the charts tomorrow.